systematic review is, why it is done, uh, how to define the search questions and prepare the protocol, all in brief, uh, about putting together a team for a systematic review and doing the literature search and the standards available to be used in systematic reviews. Let us uh, start by looking at why systematic reviews are in needed. In our practice, quite often we encounter problems, uh, the solutions to which we are not sure about. For example, when we have um, several options to treat a given disease, how do we know which one to select for uh, that particular patient? Or if we want to implement a preventive care program, such as uh, screening for pre-cancer, how do we know which interventions work and which don't? Or um, if we turn to ourselves, um, how do we know whether routinely taking antioxidants have uh, any implications on our health? How do we know or how do we decide whether we want to have annual medical checkups or not? And whether that will reduce morbidity and mortality, for example. So to answer all these and similar questions, we need information to begin with. But where will we get uh, this information or look for uh, information to answer such questions? As we all know from our own experience, quite often there is too much of information available, particularly with regard to health. And then this information is everywhere. We can see them on internet, on newspapers, on magazines, or we hear from our friends, from our relatives, uh, from our neighbors, and since recently, even from our patients who are really obsessed with uh, health and medical information. Um, but how do we find credible and trustworthy information uh, that uh, enables us to make that uh, healthcare decision regardless of whether the recipient is an individual patient, a community, or um, we ourselves. So this is where the, the review articles come in. And I'm sure that all of us have uh, read narrative reviews at uh, some stage in our career. These review articles are important because uh, we cannot read everything that are out there and digest them and come to conclusions by synthesizing these um, sometimes contradictory information. Given that um, there seems to be more than uh, 25,000 medical journals and this list is growing every year, keeping up to date by reading everything out there is uh, not an option for anybody. So review articles come to our salvation by synthesizing this information for us and putting them in places where we can easily find them. We know that the aim of any review is to summarize the available knowledge, but not all reviews are systematic reviews, nor do they have the same level of acceptance within the scientific community. To see how a traditional narrative review is different from a systematic review, let us first see what a narrative review is like. It is true that uh, narrative reviews summarize available evidence to respond to a research question or a clinical scenario. But when people write narrative reviews, quite often than not, this includes a lot of uh, cherry picking uh, in part of the author so that evidence that supports the hypothesis that they favor are preferentially included in the review. Uh, in addition, there is also no standard reporting format for narrative reviews quite often. Uh, there are also no clear specified methods for identifying, selecting and validating the information included in narrative reviews. Uh, and narrative reviews may not necessarily include all available evidence on a given topic. In contrast, a systematic review defines a specific question and uses quite explicit predefined scientific methods to identify, select, appraise, and summarize similar but separate studies related to a given research or clinical focus. 
a good systematic review often is uh, likely to have captured all available evidence uh, related to that topic. Uh, so having a clearly framed and well-defined Thanks. So having a, a clearly framed and well-defined research question uh, and the use of uh, pre-specified methods, uh, identification of all evidence uh, relevant to that research question and uh, critical appraisal of evidence and the synthesis of this evidence in a uh, sort of a coherent way differentiates a systematic review uh, from a narrative review. Uh, systematic reviews additionally have uh, standard methods to be used in reporting their findings, such as PRISMA, uh, which stand for um, preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis. <clears throat> systematic reviews are often combined with meta-analysis and uh, meta-analysis is the um, statistical method of analyzing all results from several individual studies. I don't know whether you will have a, a session on meta-analysis later, and uh, it, it, it's a totally different aspect altogether. Although many systematic reviews are accompanied by meta-analysis, there are systematic reviews that do not have accompanying meta-analysis, and often this happens when there are not enough homogeneous studies, that, are, that is the studies that look alike in terms of their methodology, uh, so that available data of which can be combined in a meta-analysis. So uh, <clears throat> if we want to do a systematic review, how do we set about it? First of all, we must set up a team that would work together for this systematic review. One person cannot do a systematic review due to its uh, methodological demands. And it is important to have content and methods experts on your team. Uh, this is important as one of the common reasons or maybe the commonest reason for systematic reviews to get rejected by good journals, um, regardless of its content is uh, small but significant flaws in the adapted methodology. And secondly, we have to formulate the clinical or research question that we uh, plan to answer. And of course, uh, these first and second steps can be swapped and we can first define the questions that we want to um, answer in the systematic review and then assemble a team that we think is suitable for that task. But even if we start by defining the research question first, it uh, really pays off to refine it again after setting up the team of content and uh, methods experts, because in research, nothing beats uh, putting as many critically thinking brains as possible together. <clears throat> the next step would be to develop a protocol. Here in the protocol, we will continue um, uh, to uh, <clears throat> look at the uh, research question uh, critically and outline all the steps uh, we will follow in doing our systematic review. Developing the protocol is also a very important step in doing a systematic review for two reasons. Firstly, this is what sets the systematic review apart from a narrative review and a flawed methodology can totally ruin our chances of publishing it as a systematic review in a good journal. Secondly, the protocol used must be very transparent and replicable so that anyone else can also follow the same protocol and arrive at the same conclusions. This protocol will detail our search strategy, the eligibility criteria for the papers to be included, the screening process that we expect to adopt uh, to screen for the articles that we want to include in the paper, the methods of evaluating the uh, quality of the articles and how we will appraise the risk of biases. Sometimes uh, the uh, good protocols uh, can be published as separate papers uh, on their own merit, even before we perform the 
systematic review. And these will be governed by a separate set of standards known as PRISMA P and P standing for uh, protocols. So once the protocol is ready, we can start searching for literature, which uh, will be done during the next part of this session. The material found is then uh, sorted and screened, appraised, and data extracted. And finally, the extracted data are synthesized, meta-analyzed um, if possible, interpreted the findings and reported using an acceptable format. Now, let us briefly go through how to uh, define the research or clinical question that we want to answer. The first thing to determine is whether this is really a question that needs an answer. Unless we do the review to inform our practice or our personal interest, the main expected outcome of any systematic review that we do is a publication. So if the answer is already known for that particular research question, or if there's a systematic review published covering the same question or the same topic, same focus, there is a very slim or no chance of getting another systematic review published on the same topic. Therefore, doing a very thorough search of literature before embarking on this kind of an exercise is very important for us to ensure that the question that we have in mind has not been answered already by somebody else. Um, when we do systematic reviews and we, when we write the protocols, many of us use the uh, PICO format to articulate the research question or the clinical question. And uh, this acronym stands for the um, Population Intervention Comparator and Outcome. There are many other variations in this also where um, certain other elements such as uh, time, uh, environment or etiology are added or some elements uh, removed. So depending on our question and its focus, this acronym would change. It is also important for us to state the rationale of uh, this exercise, that's uh, this systematic review at the very outset and revisit this rationale with the content and methods experts to ensure that we have uh, got it right. We will often have to go back and forth several times between the rationale and framing the question until we are clearly and um, <clears throat> um, uh, until we are sure that um, we have clearly and explicitly uh, uh, stated the rationale as well as the uh, question uh, that we want to answer by doing this systematic review. <clears throat> so this going back and forth between uh, framing the question and um, um, uh, refining the rationale uh, take, may take some time and effort, but this is a very important method and probably the most crucial part of this whole exercise. <clears throat> Uh, there are various types of questions that we might have. Um, for example, what is the um, incidence of aplastic anemia in patients undergoing chemotherapy is a, is a question on incidence. What is the um, prevalence of depression in the elderly is a prevalence question, and these are typical epidemiological questions. Uh, the questions related to treatment, um, screening and prevention, and sometimes harm are all related to one another and are grouped as intervention questions. Um, and then there are other questions, uh, such as questions on diagnostic accuracy of uh, instruments or uh, procedures. Now, these different types of questions that I have put on this slide are merely uh, some examples of the questions that we may want to ask, uh, we may want to uh, answer in our systematic review. But there are various other types of questions that we can ask too. The bottom line is that we can use systematic reviews to answer any question as long as we can frame it in an objective and rational manner uh, that can be objectively answered using the available evidence. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, we talked about the PICO format on a previous slide. Uh, something that transpires from this um, is the need to define each uh, single element in the search, research question or the uh, clinical question that we want to answer. Um, say, for example, if the exposure that we are interested in uh, is hypertension, how do we define hypertension? Do we include self-report measures uh, or do we uh, only want objectively measured hypertension or do we bo accept both? If the cutoff levels uh, have changed for hypertension over the time, do we include all criteria, the new criteria or both? Um, <clears throat> So these are some of the questions that will arise when you start uh, framing your research question. Uh, each of the elements in our research question or the clinical question can uh, have uh, that kind of uh, issues. So getting this question clearly framed is uh, actually a big deal. Uh, this is sometimes uh, quite difficult for some clinical questions where the clinical outcomes may be are different based on the setting, such as the hospital or community setting, um, the age, sex, uh, or the ethnicity of the population, um, the doses, dosage of the medication, the level of uh, disease severity, etc. So framing the question may be difficult for some systematic reviews uh, than for the others, but it can be made easier if we ourselves stand. Uh, uh, behind our rationale and understand uh, why we do this uh, systematic review. Uh, developing a good uh, search strategy is uh, uh, another vital step in doing a systematic review. Of course, the search strategy, the um, keywords uh, and how these keywords are combined may slightly differ from database to database, but the general structure would remain more or less the same. For example, PubMed have a field called MESH or medical subject heading, which is unique to it. And some other databases also have such unique fields to which we must adjust our search criteria. But the keywords and the combinations will largely be similar regardless of what databases uh, we would use. When we do a systematic review, we want it to be as comprehensive as possible in our, in our search, uh, so as to uh, not miss any of the relevant evidence. This can only be done if you can identify all possible related terms and synonyms for a given uh, word that we would want to uh, include in our research question. Uh, for example, to capture everything related to uh, maybe diabetes, uh, we may want to include the terms such as um, diabetes, diabetic, uh, blood sugar, blood glucose, hyperglycemia, uh, hyperglycemic, and any, any other similar term that we can think of that, is, that would uh, define high uh, blood sugar levels or diabetes. And we must capture American as well as British spellings um, many databases automatically search for both variants, but uh, there's no harm in uh, including uh, both those uh, variants in the search terms. Uh, in addition, the use of truncation can also be useful to widen our research, uh, sorry, uh, the search. Uh, it is uh, also important to determine how the keywords are combined with uh, one another. Uh, we often use Boolean operators such as and, no, um, or not for this purpose. Uh, most databases have these functions inbuilt for us to use, uh, but uh, we must master the techniques of how best to combine these to obtain the desired outcome of our search. <clears throat> So before I finish this introduction and hand over to uh, uh, Ms. Shirani uh, to continue with the literature search, uh, I want to say a few words about um, some other aspects of the search strategy. Uh, we must define the databases that we plan to use at the beginning 
and we must ensure that these databases uh, comprehensively capture everything that out there and uh, relevant to our uh, research or the clinical question. Some databases are more likely to yield the results that we need. So these must be uh, clear, uh, very carefully uh, chosen at the outset. Um, <clears throat> more databases that we can search within, the better it is for our search. But this number is always a trade-off with the resources that we have at our disposal to be used for uh, our systematic review. Some systematic searches that I have done generated over 15,000 articles uh, that I had to screen. And this is not possible unless you have adequate resources to do this. And I don't advocate limiting the number of databases too much either. It's not a very pleasant experience when you have uh, published a really great systematic review only to receive a letter from uh, most eminent research in the field indicating that one of her publications had not been captured as um, actually happened recently to one of my colleagues at an overseas university. Uh, this was simply because he uh, excluded one database uh, due to resource limitations. And we often tend to include only the um, English articles in our reviews, but given that there is an increasingly large volume of literature published in uh, other languages, especially in uh, Chinese, Spanish, and Portuguese, some reviewers are now quite critical about not adequately addressing this issue, uh, which I have personally experienced. Uh, so these are some areas that we must be cautious about when we um, do a systematic review. And going by my personal experience again, I'm uh, also not a big fan of uh, using inbuilt function in the databases, such as the uh, use of uh, inbuilt filters and limits. Uh, such functions are um, as good as and as accurate as uh, humans that they ent that enter data into these fields. Uh, so be wary of uh, using these fields unless their use is essential. Um, so with that note, I hand this over to Gwani and uh, Ms. Shirani to uh, continue with the rest of this session. Thank you. Mishirani, uh, can you share your slides? Okay, can you hear? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes can we can. Yes, yeah. We can. Okay, I will share it. Can you see the screen? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, um, now uh, let us uh, do actually uh, that uh, I'm going to uh, do some th something related to a practical session. And um, I think now uh, Dr. Chamara has done almost about the research question, search strategy, how to develop a search strategy and how to, I am going to do how to run the search in relevant databases and um, how to, I mean that the final version is actually, I'm not doing that, but uh, uh, there are facilities to export references to a citation manager. So um, actually, as Dr. Chamara said, that formulation of a search strategy is very, very important. And it is the core of your systematic review and all the results will depend on the quality of the search strategy. 
And why do you create a sensitive search? Because uh, you can see that uh, you have you have in a systematic review you have to get all the potential relevant articles, and not only the I mean not definitely relevant, but all the potential. Uh, potentially relevant articles. So you have to use synonyms and variants of search terms uh, and use KI in adding search filters. And you have to search for multiple resources, uh, databases, gray literature, and uh, all other things. And uh, the thing is, first, uh, you have to break your question into concepts. You have to identify your key concepts. Then you have to identify your synonyms and related words. And you may have to, you, actually it's a must to use advanced searching techniques such as phrase searching, Boolean operators, field searching, truncation, and wildcard, et cetera, where necessary. You have to apply filters and run the search. So um, I, I have taken uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, the question or the research study as a for an ex, for a, uh, for doing this uh, thing. So Sri Lanka will be the geographical limitation. And then my main focus is to get literature related to self-medication practice and undergraduates. So those are the two main concepts I have identified, self-medication practice and undergraduates. For the time being, please ignore these two. And the second step is identifying synonyms and related terms. As Dr. Chalmer said, you can use keywords, general terms, as well as appropriate index terms or the subject specific terms using uh, index terms um, offered by the by relevant databases such as medical subject headings, entry terms and uh, subject headings. And you can make a list or a, you can um, uh, use a table to first uh, for formulation of for formulation of a search strategy you can use a table likewise you can identify concepts then under under each, each concept you can uh, list down the synonyms for self-medication practice uh, over the counter drugs and for undergraduates, university students. And here I have used a broad term, but I'm not going to include this into my search because uh, uh, we need, it depends uh, on the plan of the systematic review, whether to limit it to under exclusion and inclusion criteria of PRISMA, we have to uh, set limits. So, uh, it uh, depends. And uh, you can use Boolean operators, as uh, Dr. Chalmer said, that I have combined to combine two concepts. We can use an operator. Here you can see you can use two different concepts, self-medication practices and undergraduates. To combine those two concepts, I use an operator and to Combined synonyms, we can use O operator here and all the times if we type, we have to use capital letters and not uh, means that exclude one term from another that uh, uh, easy example animals, not dogs. But uh, when we apply not operator, we have to be very, very careful because sometimes it tends to exclude uh, necessary results too. So um, usually we use those two operators and an O operator. And so in some databases, instead of letters, they use symbols, plus, minus, and parentheses. Here the, the logic is that uh, when diagrams, I think you know all, all about this, the combinations of these two. And the phrase searching, this is very, very important. Because um, if we 
if it's in some databases they um, doesn't offer uh, agency searching so in those cases we have to use phrases and if we do especially in search engines if we do a search in scholar google phrase searching is a must otherwise if i just type self medication practices without quotation marks it will retrieve all the records with self separately medication separately and practices separately so to get all these three words into one in i mean uh, in near in uh, as a, as a phrase we have to use double quotation marks uh, even in pubmed and in scopus also we can use the phrase searching and stem searching or truncation we can use truncation marks to search multiple words which uh, will save our time so if we use com comp with the asterisk mark or the any other symbol that which is assigned by the database it will retrieve all the terms with comp and wildcard characters we use for uh, spelling variations and for plurals i think all of you know that Uh, british there are variations in british and american english so uh, to uh, avoid that problem we can use wild card characters again the symbol may vary according to the database so uh, those are the main i mean the tips for uh, searching a database for advanced searching techniques and search filters again you have to be very very careful when applying filters as you may lose articles accidentally so you can use any of the filters according to your exclusion and inclusion criteria of prisma or to uh, get the or to limit the uh, uh, number of hits so where to search or oh, what are the sources so you you can't limit your search into one database or two you you have to select the relevant databases for your systematic uh, for a start and you can use google scholar and research gate even and to get uh, sri lanka to get uh, to get uh, sri lankan journals journal articles you can use sri lankan journals online and for clinical things pubmed and you can use citation so scopus is a citation database sinal is um, related to nursing and allied health sciences i think you know all of these things to get reviews you can use cochrane reviews and we don't have access to science citation index mbase and uh, science direct but uh, pubmed is a free uh, uh, open access source and scopus uh, we have sub purchase to the university and uh, research for life again you we have purchase to the life Uh, university and we have number of databases included under nari so those are the things that publish and apart from that as supplementary resources you can use gray literature that is unpublished non commercial and hard to find information that organizations such as professional associations research institutes and government departments produce because uh, sometimes it can be invaluable to your review especially for local literature and also an alternative resource that may be used to overcome possible bias presented by published information so um uh, documenting documenting is very very essential you have to document the search when you are conducting a systematic review and i think you all of you know about the prisma model so you have to use 
document the search process for each database, which, which, should, with the, which should include all search terms and variations, the date when the searches were conducted, and how many results you retrieved for each search, and how many... How many results you retrieved for each search? How many records were duplicates? And the final number of results that you used for your first pass. So uh, Prisma provides standards for the type of information that you should include. So you have to note down all the things. And um, we'll um, go to uh, PubMed search so you can go to uh, you can get access to pubmed through all these links and since we have the access to hinari database actually we need to search pubmed through hinari uh, because uh, it will provide more full text articles uh, which uh, would be available in Hinari database. Uh, don't use this uh, URL because you have to first uh, log in through username and password to the Hinari and then you have to go to the PubMed. So um, you can see we can go to PubMed using this link. It will, um, there are two options one can do. That is, you can conduct a simple search by filling this search bar, or you can go to advanced search options. So simple search uh, you can use author, title or words and if you know exactly about the author and the journal title or year and then you can use single citation match matcher and searching by author you can see you can use if you know exactly about the author and because since if you if you have done some quick search and um, if you are familiar with the so or with an author that who is an expert in that particular field and if you want to find out more articles uh, published by that particular author then you can use author search here you can see you if you only know the author's last name, you can just use author field. Can you see? Um, here you can see, you, you have to type, you have to type AU um, with square brackets. So, and you can conduct a simple search. Here you can see I have typed Pereira with author limited to author field, and it it um, I have retrieved Pereira R M Pereira H and so many Pereiras because I didn't um, specified initials. So. If you know, because uh, author names are automatically truncated for various initials and designations in the PubMed. So to turn off the truncation, you can use double quotes around the author's name with the author search field tag. So this is the author search field tag. And you can see, now I want to get articles uh, of Indy Pereira. So I have included, I have uh, typed it uh, within double quotation marks and you can and included author tag and I have retrieved only the articles published by Indy Pereira. 
okay i think you can see the screen of pubmed professor guwani professor guwani yes we can see okay yes yes sorry okay so otherwise you can go to advanced search in options and you can select author instead of that here you can see in the advanced search all fields and you can limit to author and there are you can see author corporate author first author identifier author last but uh, to get uh, i think it's better to always use author because if you select first author then the records only the records with the with that particular name as the first author will be appeared so to avoid that one you can use author so that is searching by author and the other simple uh, search is that if you want to say say for for a for a subject discipline there are you know there are number of journals that there are some um, not general journals but there are subject specific journals and you want to search that particular journal then you, there are three ways there are three ways you can use full journal title again within as a phrase you have to enter using double quotation marks or the title abbreviation say n e n g l j m a m e d so those are the standard abbreviations you can find all the abbreviations and the the type full journal names uh, through nlm catalog and the iss number so you can use journal and and you can also use the journal field as i explained in uh, author title with square brackets you can enter journal here or in advanced search you can select the journal so uh, searching for the year or date again you can use the results timeline or the i i will show it to you how to get the results timeline and use the search builder using advanced search and also you can search by a single date in the search box and you can search for a date range and you can search for a relative date range in advanced search options and also you can filter using publication types say clinical trials or systematic reviews text availability whether to limit to full text or abstract publication date species language sex subject journal category age and there are some additional filters so automatic term mapping it's it's a it it recognizes uh, thousands of concepts that is pubmed uh, doesn't conduct adjacent searching as as i told earlier but phrases are recognized by the subject translation tables and atm checks subject medical subject headings journal titles and authors but if we um, use it to a phrase searching and we can bypass it and we can search for a specific phrase using double quotation marks there are advantages as well as disadvantages in using uh, phrase searching because um, uh, in pubmed if we just type um, self medication practices in um, advanced search bar it will search all these things 
subjects, medical subject headings, journal titles, and authors too. But if we limit it to a self-phrase search in, it will provide, or to the index terms, it will provide only this, uh, only the records with this term. So in advanced searching, you can use searching by a specific field, then you can browse the index terms. You can combine searches and build large or complex search strings. You can add it to history. You can preview the number of search results and you can combine searches using history and with the search details. you can see this is the advanced search we build you can see there are all fields and you can enter the search term here there's query box and i will show you how to uh, conduct a search using advanced search builder so um uh, I, I will go to advanced search uh, options and uh, we'll conduct a search there. So this is the uh, simple search box. And if we go to advanced search options, you can see here, you can see the all fields, you can limit it to a date, or if you know the ISBN number, there are a number of limitations, but better to use all fields if you are not conducting a specific search related to a term. So I will take my example, self-medication practices. So um, I will show you the index first. You can get the some uh, idea from uh, cell index. Either you can click it here, you can see all fields. And actually when conduct a search, it is better to search separately. So this is for self-medication practices. You can see I didn't type double quotation marks, but since I uh, got it from the index, it automatically included double quotation marks. So I can add it to the query box. Here you can see the query, self-medication practices all field. And instead of search, I will add it to history. Okay. So now it will be in my history. Um, this is the one I actually I did uh, in the morning because I thought there are disturbances due to this uh, rain and uh, thundering. So I have done it. Anyway, I will show it to you again. So this is this is the one I did for. Um, Yes, now I did it with the uh, index terms and you can see the details only with all fields, self-medication practices. So if I type it without, without the index terms, you can see I have done it. You can see number of hits around 7,000 and you can see the details. Now you can see the details. Um, self-medication 
it has obtained automatically from mesh terms because I told you that through ATM, that automatic uh, searching, they will search mesh terms, title, and author sub author fields. So it has obtained self medication from mesh terms and self separately because I didn't uh, use. Um, double quotation marks, so self separately, medication separately from all fields, and automatically combine self medication from all fields, and combine with practicability from, from all fields, or practicable, and uh, practicals, practice, practices. So this is the advantage. So because it has uh, used ATM, and obtain all the terms. Here you can see this the translation, self-medication and practice, practicability, practice, practicable, all these terms they have obtained. So with and after that, I told you with synonyms. I will do it again. Now I have I have so I have a I mean a fair idea regarding uh, how many hits are there for self-medication practices, okay? Now I'm going to, because I know some researchers may use over-the-counter drugs instead of self-medication. So I will type over-the-counter drugs. Still, I am not doing combining research. In all fields, I'm not taking index. If you are not knowing the words or synonyms or terms, then it's better to go through the index and you can find out the relevant index terms. Then I will add it. And I'm again add it to history. Okay. So you can see again, I have now added or the counter drugs here. Here you can see. Again, I didn't type non-prescription drugs because it has automatically obtained non-prescription drugs, non-prescription drugs, and non-prescription drugs from all fields. And again, that this is the disadvantage. They have searched for over, counter, and drugs separately and over the counter duct separately. So if you want to get specifically about the, only about the over the counter ducts as I uh, did in um, self-medication practices here, but you can see only 150 records are there. But in a systematic review, we are, we are trying to get all potentially relevant articles. So um, first, as the first thing, I think it's better if you can do uh, that with the uh, ATM search, okay? So uh, now I'm now I have completed about the about the one concept, self medication practices and over the about the self self medication practices. So now I'm going to to my other concept that is undergraduates. So I will type it again, undergraduates, and I will add it to the query box and I will add it to history, okay? And you can see again, now I have so many records with undergraduates. And apart from that, I can take university students. You can see I have done a search with university students uh, without any specification. And it has searched for university, universities, universities, and students, students, all students. So I feel that this is too much. And because uh, it will uh, direct for say uh, around more than 261,000 results. 
So this is the advantage uh, if we conduct step by step and use step by step approach. So I now I have I have limited it to university only for university students with phrase searching. So now I have obtained only 15,000 results. So now I have completed two concepts with synonyms. Now I'm going to com combine those concepts with and operator. So I'm going to first, always you have to first combine the synonyms. So I have combined first the results of self-medication practice with over-the-counter drugs. I will do it again. I will take this one, self-medication practice under action. You have to click add query. Then you can see it has appeared in the query box. Then I will combine what the other synonym with the history over the counter drugs. Okay, here under actions, you can add with O because it's a synonym. Then we can add with O, then you can add it to history self-medication practice or over-the-counter drugs. Now, um, I, I have some satisfaction that I have covered one concept and I, have add, I want to add it to history. You can see now we have combined all these records and I have retrieved around 16,000 results. So, likewise, I want to add undergraduates or university students okay and i have now i have around 80224 hits now i'm going to combine my two concepts self medication practice and undergraduates so what should i do i want to get this one with actions at query and I have to combine it with my other concepts, undergraduates or university students. In this case, I have to add with and, okay? And then you can, you have covered all the concepts here. And if you want, you can add Sri Lanka even, but uh, for the time rest, Likewise, you can add Sri Lanka or Asia or anything, and you can add to history. Because now I have ended up with 209 results, okay? If you have created my NCBI, you can create my NCBI account, then you can save all the details of this one, or otherwise you can download this one and you can get an Excel file with this, all the details, query details, all the details you can get. So now I can see my results. Okay. Can you see the screen, results screen? Uh, yes, Shirani, can, can. Okay, so this is the results screen. Okay, here you can see I have ended up with two thousand. 209 results and this is the time year span results by year i told you earlier that you can limit the results by year so if you want to get year by year results you can say 2017 we can expand it here you can see 2017 25 articles likewise you can limit your results and now you can apply, apply what you want, apply the filters. If you want only the systematic review, I will apply this one. Here only, I will minimize this. Here only five articles 
appeared as systematic reveals. Okay, now you can see only the, I mean, most relevant articles we can get using, using the step-by-step -step approach. And the, I want to show you some, I think that uh, time uh, limit, is it okay, uh, Professor Guni? Because I think now you can save it. You can either select all results or you can uh, select the relevant, all are actually relevant. And here you can see either you can use abstract version, summary, or only the PMID version. And you can create a file here and you can save it. Or otherwise you can email it with, because now I have my NCBI account, so automatically my email uh, will appear. So um, all results on this page and summary, and I will say send email. Okay, now it will go to my email. And or otherwise you can send it to my bibliography or citation manager or to clipboard or any thing. So I will add it to my bibliography, okay? And also you can see here sorted by, you can uh, change display options here with the format again. Here you can see the mail appeared with sent by NCBI to my mail. And you can see the summaries, abstracts. Display options, if I get abstract version, you can see it will appear as abstracts, okay? And you can sort by best match, most recent publication date, first author or journal also. And also per page articles. You can limit it to 10, 20, 50 or even the 200 articles you can get from one page. Okay, so this is actually a very brief explanation and you can create an alert and again there is a user guide. Here you can see I didn't use any parentheses or uh, other things but in the search bar the my search strategy has appeared with all the parentheses and Boolean operators, uh, phrase searching and all those things. Okay, so likewise, um, actually this is a very brief explanation. It is better if you can um, use my NCBI and I'm again uh, sharing my PowerPoint. So this thing we have done and, and remember, PubMed processes all Boolean operators left to right. So that's why I first, I mean that first in, uh, we have to first identify the synonyms and first combine those terms. And after that, you otherwise you will get hundreds or thousands of articles which are not relevant. So, um, and the builder will automatically add O operator and parentheses for multi multiple terms selected from the index. And these are some uh, actually for, I use allergic patients for self-medication practices for allergic patients. And those, this is the uh, details. The more I mean that uh, with uh, this is with uh, allergies with uh, ATM. So they have used hypersensitive. I didn't type it. 
So structure, I think you know now the structure I told you, it include uh, journal source information. I will uh, show you again. Here you can see the, it shows the journal source, journal infection device. This is the average form, year, volume, issue number, volume, issue number, pages, and DOI. I think all of you know about DOI, digital object identifier. Then the title, then the authors, their affiliations, and PMID number, which is uh, unique to the article. And this is a free article. And um, so this is the structure of the results. And uh, you can use, if you don't know exactly about the terms, it is better to use medical subject headings, mesh terms. And I show you how to save it. And other thing is export to citation manager. You can use either um, Sotero or Mendeley or uh, those things. And mesh terms. Actually, mesh terms, it's better because it should be a specific one, subject related one. Because you know that undergraduates, I use that term is a more general term and the university students for because it, it's, a, it's not a subject term. So that's why I limited it to a phrase searching to get only university students records it. Otherwise, I, at, I think you have seen, I have ended up with uh, around uh, 200,000 articles, which is not manageable. So you can go to mesh terms and you can use mesh terms. And uh, it's better if you can get registered to my NCBI homepage, then all the saved searches and bibliography, you can um, create it. So I have cleared all the data in my, my NCBI. Here you can see my email is there and we can create all the details till we done the systematic review, we can use it. So it will allow you to save records, collections, my bibliography, save searches and customize your results. And it will automatically update your search results from, you can create alert service and it will uh, alert you to your email also. So um, this is, and apart from that, in Google Scholar, I will uh, do it again. Um, So, uh, actually, Google Scholar is, a, um, I mean, comparatively a good uh, resource to st start the searching because you can see I have here. In Google Scholar also, I think that I told you that you have to use um, phrase searching. Otherwise, it will, uh, sh here you can see I have used self-medication practices of female law, women undergraduates here. So uh, I have to type it and I have ended up with uh, 
Chemistry Results with since 2017 because I have limited it to female or women since there are no options or limitations of filtering. Okay. And Uh, Scopus is another thing I think we have access. You, it's a citation database and the search interfaces or the search uh, uh, website is somewhat, it's not same like in uh, PubMed and you, you can get remote access uh, but you have to go to USDNet. I think all of you have registered in USDNet sphere. So you have to go to USDNet for Scopus access and you can do simple searching, advanced searching and you, have, you can analyze results and you can get citations and cited articles. And also you can use Boolean and proximity operators uh, similar to PubMed and you can use proximity operators for near words and this phrase searching is somewhat different to get exact phrase here instead of double quotation marks you have to enclose it in braces say any stop word or spaces or punctuation you have to use braces and for loose phrase you can use heart attack say with double quotation marks. So it will search only in title, abstract and keywords. And, is, and if we just type heart attack, it will appear together or separately in the title, abstract or keywords. You can just um, try out Scopus because uh, due to time constraints, I, I'm not going into the details. So again, we have um, truncation or stem searching. And this is the uh, search result page. And you can see, you can analyze search results and also you can cite, get citations. And there are some filters here. Okay. And um, you can analyze search results by year, author, affiliation, country, subject area, type or fund, funding sponsor. Here you can see you can get uh, a graph like this, documents by year. And uh, I will show some uh, things related to, can you see the screen about the, sorry, not this one. Okay, um, you can get all the details about the graphs you can analyze. We don't need to get, uh, I mean, data and we no need to analyze. It will analyze all the documents by and classify according to year, author, affiliation, country or subject area and the type. Okay, so um, the important points are due to um, now uh, it's I think 1220. So the important things are choose relevant databases more than one. You, you can conduct a quick search or identify a model article and then you can use the terms from this model article, look at the subject terms, use the indexes or thesaurus or medical subject headings, find search terms that are not in the indexes too, 
and search every search term one at a time. This is very, very important. And broaden your search with O with similar terms and combine different concepts with AND and apply limits, look at the results, whether there are related citations, look for similar articles and look for look whether you have missed anything and start all over again. And you have to record or you have to document all these steps. So that's all. Uh, thank you and I uh, wish you good luck for a successful and systematic, successful systematic review. And if you need any clarification, further clarification, please feel free, be free to contact me uh, regarding uh, PubMed searching or Scopus searching. So um, I'm willing to help you. Okay, thanks a lot. And thank you, uh, Professor Guwani, for um, giving me this opportunity. And um, it's a pleasure to me to conduct, uh, it was a pleasure me, to me to conduct this session. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Shirani, for making it so simple. Over to you, uh, uh, Sajid, uh, to... Yeah, uh, thank you, madam. Thank you. Uh... Dr. Chamara, Mrs. Uh, Shirani for your excellent presentations. Now we are opening the floor for questions. So you all can uh, unmute your mics and ask uh, questions if you all are having uh, from the resource persons. Few announcements uh, regarding these presentations and the recordings. Uh, so we will be getting your attendance and we, I have put a link on the chat option so if you haven't filled the attendance sheet uh, from the chat option, please uh, feel free to fill it because we will be issuing an e-certificate as well as uh, we will be collecting your emails. So initially we will be sending the PowerPoints and then we will be sending you all the certificates because it will take some time to generate the certificate. And then uh, after some time, because we need to do some editings of these recordings, the recording will be uploaded to the faculty uh, website. So from that, you can access the recordings. Right, now you all can ask questions uh, from the resource persons. Thank you. Ms. Shirani, uh, I'm Janani, do you hear me? Hello, Dr. Janani. Yeah. Yes, uh, Ms. Shirani, can anybody uh, register in this National Library of Medicine? Is it, uh, yes. Is it done? There are, yes, there are two ways. Uh, that is, uh, uh, you, we can go to our university email. I, I think that that is the easiest thing. Uh, they have uh, under their university or um, uh, I mean uh, institutes list, uh, our university is there. Our mm -hmm. name appeared, University of Sri Java then put appeared. Right. It's a, the best, I think, easiest way to uh, go through our email, university email. Just to type, is it? Type, yes. That's National Library of Thank you. Medicine. You can go to a PubMed page and uh, uh, you, uh, type it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Um, actually, I have, I have, uh, I think, I think all of you have used Hinari database because um, from Hinari database, uh, you can. Uh, it's, it's. Uh, I always advise to use research PubMed through Hinari database because uh, we, uh, due to time constraints, we uh, today we cannot uh, conduct or. Uh, explain about the Hinari database, but it's better to go through Hinari database. Right, uh, since there are absence of questions and uh, we are going to wind up for today and just for a small reminder, so we have uh, planned for a series of workshops like this. So our next workshop about the referencing uh, softwares. So initially we'll be doing about Mendeley. So our resource person will be our uh, Professor Hasini Banhaker uh, from our faculty. Uh, so please feel free to join. We will advertise it like this. And after that, we'll be talking about the EndNote. 
right likewise uh, there will be series of workshops uh, so thank you very much for your participation i have uh, again circulated the attendance list and thank you very much again dr chamara uh, mrs shani uh, for your excellent presentations thanks sir thank you thank you thank you everybody